He said, if you can't win, wreck someone who can. Exactly. And that was, I, but I knew exactly. I wasn't winning that. Why do people not get out of the fast lane? Every right. time I see that picture of you <laughs> riding around with that big-ass fro you're wearing, it, I still get pissed. It was that <laughs> night I said, preparate. But I didn't say what I wasn't supposed to say, and that's A1. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk 447. I'm Jeff Emig. As you can see here next to me, I've got uh, Ricky Carmichael. He's coming to us from his uh, Tallahassee Taj Mahal. I like to <laughs> does call anybody it. Want, does anyone want to buy this place? Is it, it for it sale? Could, it, it, it could be yours. So it look on yours. the MLS. Just search Tallahassee. Uh, <laughs> search Taj Mahal. And uh, you could have this uh, beautiful. It, it is a very, very well done residence, Ricky. I really enjoy visiting. So yeah, we have a good time. Back, yeah. The pool yeah, area you... out back. The pool area out back is something else. Problem is, is uh, your lady tends to blow out the speakers because she cranks it too high. <laughs> we hey, have a good time. Hey, uh, are you feeling better? I heard you were a little uh, under the weather after Anaheim. Uh, I was a little better this morning, but uh, I woke up Saturday morning. And I'm like, man, my my uh, my throat's a little sore, my nose is a little stuffy. I'm like, oh crap. Really? And, um, so I'm like, of all days. yeah, Saturday morning, yeah. Like I did my morning run. I'm like, oh man, like it just didn't feel that great. And so I'm like pounding vitamin C's and lozenges and all that. Just got behind. I got behind the eight ball, man. So. I'm wondering if like shaking uh, Webb's hand or, or Zach Osborne's hand at the press conference, because I know they were both sick, I'm wondering if they spread the love. Maybe, huh? Maybe. And our yeah. our guy, Jet Lawrence, he had food, po food poisoning, so you definitely don't want to shake his hand. <laughs> no, uh, Anyway, so I'm uh, here at the uh, Fox Racing Studios in Irvine, California at Fox headquarters. Obviously, uh, if you watched the first show, uh, we've got our nice studio set up, and so uh, I've got uh, great support from Fox Racing, and so that's why you see this uh, beautiful setup that I have. But Ricky and I, we're going to knock out a couple episodes of this show uh, where we're kind of just doing the one-on-one -on -one thing. Uh, we also have some other setups that we're going to have. We've got some fantastic guests coming up in a, in a couple weeks, uh, uh, so really looking forward to that. Um, we also have uh, officially now... We have uh, our first sponsor, Ricky. You want to tell him about it? Yeah, we can. Uh, we'd like to uh, announce uh, Slick Products as uh, our first real sponsor of Real Talk 447. Um, I have a great relationship with them. They're a fantastic company. Uh, the best, um, the best motorcycle washing. Not even motorcycle washing. Any kind of power sports washing, car washing, um, lubricants that you could possibly ever want. Um, um, so I'm, I'm happy to bring them on. Uh, it's a great company, uh, bio-friendly, and uh, yeah, man, they're, um, I'm, I'm glad to have them on board. We're going to have a lot of fun. Fro's going to tell you some more details about it. they got a lot of fun stuff planned for uh, Real Talk 447. Yeah, but so I've seen the, the videos and stuff that you've done with them, the marketing videos, and I've been to your farm a number of times, and I have never seen you wash your own bike. Dude, you, you're going to disrespect you me? I see you on the video washing it. It's actually my forte, and now... Oh, that's your uh, thing, is to wash? Oh, dude, I, I love wash, washing my bike. It's not that I didn't want to. Probably someone just took it upon their own liberty to wash it, trying to do me a solid. See, if you had friends like me, they would probably do stuff like that for you. Hey, if, if they ship me some product... I'm just going to pass it on down. I got two guys that work on my bikes. I got BJ Burns, takes care of all my stuff, and at times Scott Burtness at Husqvarna. Yeah. Still to this day, I've been with Husqvarna for three and a half years, and yeah. I haven't done an air filter since I've been on Husqvarna. Really? Yeah, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a great company. We linked up with them uh, several years ago now. And um, the story of Slick Products is really cool and, and how they got to where they are. So you guys got to check them out. Check their uh, website out. And, yeah, really good product products, basically. It's a three-step process and uh, has everything you need for your washing needs. And like I said, for the, the whole motorsports uh, side of things, you can use Slick Products for uh, whether it's motorcycles, UTVs, ATVs. Um, well, back there with that red clay and stuff you have, you need a little yeah. extra 
something just straight water ain't gonna get it done. yeah you do you do and the foaming gun i love the foaming gun i mean a lot of you guys have seen the ads that we do uh how we foam up the bike uh so much when we're cleaning it it's a lot of fun that the foaming gun they get just cover the bike so that's your thing Let that's that like is, your guilty pleasure is to wash your bike after you get done do you do your yeah, boots too? it is man you get the you, you get the mixture right and uh spraying it it's kind of like it's addictive you know you're like man this is fun it's um satisfying if you will <laughs> so last week we had johnny o walking around picking up little uh what's he call them festers little festers of like lint on the floor <laughs> and for you it's it's dirt bikes all right hey so what i uh i was listening to my my uh you know, my European football show I like, uh, the Grumpy Pundits, where I was listening on the Sirius XM this morning. Uh, uh -huh. And they mentioned that it's uh, National Bobblehead Day. I, I guess they have a day for everything now. But since it is National Bobblehead Day, I thought we should make our first Slick Products uh, giveaway. Yes. Let's Which we'll be doing every week. Every every, every week. podcast. We're so gonna be giving they, a uh, we're gonna be giving away a Slick Products wash kit. Preferably, I'd like to give away the Ricky Carmichael wash kit. Duh. Yeah. So hopefully it's that one. Does it and, come with uh, somebody to wash it for you? Do you personally go to their house? I That'd mean, be rad. That'd the three-step process and what they use makes it pretty easy. So as long as you can spray it on there and a couple other things, I'm sure everyone's <laughs> is, capable is of doing like it. An maybe booklet? not. Maybe not you. <laughs> but uh, no, it does not include someone washing it for you. <laughs> All right. So. Post a picture of your best bobblehead, whatever. Tag Ricky and I. Uh, you can use hashtag RealTalk447 on the social media sites. Uh, if you go directly to Twitter, it's at Talk447. Uh, and then we'll randomly pick a winner. We'll just whatever, whichever uh, bobblehead we think's uh, the coolest. We'll. Uh, Get your info and we'll send you some stuff. So this is going to be fun. I can't wait to see this. I, can I, can I enter? Because I got a couple. Good bobbleheads. I've got. I, I see you got all kinds of stuff back there. You got little Ricky in the background chilling. There That's right. Your right hand shoulder. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Let's. Uh, man, we you want just to debrief. A, for yeah, let's debrief. We once again. So Ricky and I. Why this whole podcast and show started is because we would always debrief like after the race sometime, and then we were two hours into a phone call, and we're like, dude, we should have just recorded that. So. That's what we are trying to do with Real Talk, um, not really edit ourselves too much and just kind of tell it like it is. And I mean, we just had the first round of Monster Energy Supercross from Anaheim. Thoughts? I know you, you sent me a well, whole list I of don't, notes. I mean, I, every, I mean, like, I don't, like, I'd rather hear your thoughts. And one question that I, and then we'll get to mine. I'll keep mine short just because, you know, uh, I talked about it on TV. So um, I would like to hear your thoughts, Jeff. But the first thing that I would like to ask you, and the question is, where, where do you feel, what, what was the biggest takeaway from the weekend? What, what caught you by storm or you're like, you weren't expecting or you were expecting that, like one, the one thing that stands out in your mind, I'm sure there's multiple things, but the biggest one where you're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Tomac didn't win or podium. Wow. Not at all. Like, like that was because what I really paid attention to was his language, his interviews, you know, what sort of comments that we had did we get from him leading into the event, right? And, um, you know, I think uh, most of the time people, hey, look, you know, just want to get through the first couple of races, settle in. I'm confident. I know I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, win six or eight of these things. Uh, and, and when I went back and I searched through comments and the like press conferences and all that, he was in the mindset of he's going there to win. Mm -hmm. Not, hey, I just want to, you know, make sure I don't have any crashes or get hurt like I did a couple of years ago or anything like that. He, it was, I'm going there to win. I've trained my ass off. The bike's amazing. I skipped motocross of nations. I didn't do any off season races. We've been like pounding out laps and, um, so I'm going there to win and he didn't win. He didn't even make the podium lap time was off. What did we look at? It was about a second a lap off of the fast time or about five or six riders yeah, that, so were, that were pretty close and he was off and yeah. he, it was, it just wasn't very impressive. Yeah. His best time, um, which is crazy. 
he only had the eighth fastest time in the main event. Yeah. And I mean, when Justin you're Brayton. Top of the power rankings, is, and everyone's like, "Yeah." I mean, that, that's the thing. Everyone gets caught up. Everyone gets caught up in the speed, you know. And there's more to it than just speed. I'm not. I like Tomac, you know, and I respect him. Uh, he's an incredible rider, and some of the funnest times watching him is when he is on a good one. He comes from behind, and he rides at a level that is just so much fun to watch. But you know, he. I mean. Well, that's that's an interesting concept here. Is eighth, that eighth eighth fastest time in the main event? Um, what he got fifth in his heat race. But but no see, no what fourth, you're Pardon about me. This, he got, pardon me. He got fourth in a, in his heat race. So, but go ahead. It, but this speed thing that we talk about, and you can go back through history. So he's had this incredible speed. Uh, you back up, maybe go to James Stewart, you go to Damon Bradshaw, some guys like this that they have that thing that we all are just like in awe of, like, whoa, like when he's on, he's on. But what, where he differs from like James, let's say James is going to go fast no matter what it's whether or not he was going to keep it on two wheels. Bradshaw was going to go fast no matter what it was, whether or not he was going to crash out. Right. But yep. Tomac, when he's off, he he just becomes like middle of the pack. Yeah, and he he got a bad start. I know that's so su- su- not surprising to some of you, but he was eleventh on the first lap. Mm-hmm. And you can't. And I talked about it a little bit on the broadcast, especially with the two fifty guys uh, for Ferrandis. You can't spot guys like Austin Fortner or Justin Cooper, that much track position. You just can't. It's so hard to make up. And he wasn't the fastest all day. So yeah, that's, it's interesting. That was your, that was surprising to you, but I want to say, I want to give a shout out to Vince Freezy. I know we've all been pretty hard on him at times. He, he had a faster lap in the main event than Eli Tomac did. Yeah. He ran a, he ran a 59.2. Eli's best was a 59.4. Yeah. So, he was... uh, shout, shout, shout out to him. Shout out to him. Well, dude, but he's been, uh, he's been something, good. Something this last six months. Remember how good he was at the Monster Energy Cup? Yeah. He, yeah, he, I think he was he incredible. Was... And he had the, you know, he, he tore his ACL last year, I believe. What was it at Minneapolis? I think it was. And so he, he was off. And uh, I read somewhere where, yeah, he just wanted to come out strong. And I think he was, you know, obviously discouraged about what happened last year and his injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hell of a night. Um, even hell of a night for, for all the smart top Bullfrog Spas Honda guys. I mean, they, they, were, they, were, they ran well. <laughs> they were all I, three together. I don't together. have the results pulled up. I'm going to the uh, SS, SX Research Department uh, just opening the page right now. But they, 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 all, they all finished uh, right together, right? Like 8, 9, 10 yep. or something like that? Yeah, yeah. They did 8, 9, 10 and uh, getting the uh, – oh, for Pete's sakes. Sorry, guys. For I had Pete's him right sake. here. Who says – for Pete's sakes. No, I'm sorry. Uh, nine, yeah, they got nine, to 9th ten, and 11th. Yeah. But um, they had the um, Vince. Yeah, what he's like, whole shot in his heat race, whole shot or right up there in the main event. So good for him. But just going back to the um, Tomac thing. Yeah, I mean, like not to, not not a slight towards Vince Freezy, but one would think that Eli Tomac would be faster than him in the main event as far as raw yeah. laps go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. That's the thing. People get caught up in the power rankings, and it's easy to do. It's easy to do. Um, what about Webb, though? 15th in each of the time qualifying, a couple yeah. seconds a lap off, struggle city, main event. Yeah. By the time the checkered flag flies, he's on the podium. Yeah, I mean, I don't – it doesn't surprise me. Honestly, I didn't think that he would get third. I thought for sure – he would be close to a top five. He's just going to find a way to make it happen and do that. I mean, the guy just, the, the more you watch him, he's more like a dungy every single time he puts in performances like this. And uh, he definitely outperformed um, the situation that he was given for sure. And that's what champions do. I, I personally feel that this is one of these rides that he's going to look back on towards the tail end of the series that this was um, – 
a key moment and 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 time for him yeah. i believe yeah definitely uh definitely has that focus to to get the job done there when it's time so I mean, what do you think? I mean, dude, I mean, I, I voiced that already. Like what, tell it, tell it. Do you think it was an incredible performance? I do because I didn't expect that at all. And, uh, um, you know, he's won, let's see, one, two, three, probably four, uh, professional championships now. And, um, when it's, when it's time, he has that ability to get focused. Right. And it's almost like the flip. It's like the exact opposite of, what I think happened with uh, Tomac this weekend. So, um, also the race for the lead was pretty awesome, right? Yeah. I mean, pretty cool to, I was really stoked on, on Barsha and C and Cirillo, both of their rides and, you know, they both made some mistakes and it all kind of shook out, but really stoked for both of them. And I, I'm going to start with Barsha is, you know, ever since he jumped on the premier class, uh, you know, he had that Bam Bam reputation and lost his ride at one point, right? And rode the Monster Energy Cup on, you know, on a privateer bike. And now it seems like so many things in his life are starting to come into focus. He's married now. He's got a, a you know, um, it, 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 he, he also talked uh, on his post-race interviews uh, that they brought Sergio on to uh, Team Yamaha. And yeah. I, I, I um, Forgive me, I forget Sergio's last name. Didn't he? Didn't he work for your team for RCH? Um, is that is this the same guy we're talking about? Sorry, sorry, dude, my phone. Sorry, got my phone going on here. I got I'm on pickup duty today. Oh, sorry. gotcha. Yeah. Um, and it seems like that they've made a couple of uh, personnel changes at Factory Yamaha or Barsha's at. And if you listen to his post-race interviews, they kind of came in and said, hey, we're not going to tell you how to ride the bike anymore. You just ride it however you want to ride it, and, and we'll try to uh, make the bike work for you, and it, and it has. Right. Um, it, he also – he won the race last year in the mud, and the rest right. of the season was pretty shitty. What, if anything, do you see as different this year that would lead you to believe that – that I mean, this is a guy that's won the titles before in the 250 class. He is a former champion. Yeah, he is a former champion. And when you see guys like um, when you see guys like guys like Marshall, who did what he did, like that's the stuff you expect him to do, and you know he's capable of doing. And um, it's <laughs> like I wonder why that doesn't happen more often. So it kind of catches me off guard a little bit, honestly. But uh, yeah, he, uh, it, it's cool to see because I'm like, damn, that's what I've always, always expected of him throughout his whole career. So um, we know what he's capable of, and it was cool to see. It caught me off guard for sure. I wasn't expecting that. Um, he had seemed excited, which a lot of people do at the press conference. Uh, but he talked a lot about the bike and that he had tested more than um, he had ever had. Um, Sergio's last name, by the way, is Ivanto. Sorry about that. Ivanto Avento. And uh, he, he he had talked about how he had done more testing than he ever had, started basically from scratch, and that his that bike that he's riding is his personal bike. Like he has developed it all. He's done his own testing for himself. And uh, maybe that's why, you know, maybe, maybe that's why. And maybe all, most certainly a lot of us underrated him. I think it caught us off guard. However, I will say that he is capable of doing that. So um, it well, was awesome. If, I hope he I hope he backs it up. Oh, he needs to have another strong ride. Like he yeah. can't go seventh this week. You know? Yeah. It, it reminds me a bit of and you know, obviously I wasn't there, but uh when you jumped on uh, Suzuki, you had been at Honda, correct? And then you went to Suzuki, and you guys were you were still developing RM250 two-stroke yeah. at the time. And I remember hearing stories that uh, Ian Harrison and Raj and the team were all out at, 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 at the goat farm, and it was like, this thing's not ready to go. And in the off-season, the amount of time that you put on the bike was incredible. And that 
I mean, you tell me if, if I was wrong, but there was like a spec change one day and the sun was almost down and they're like, okay, yeah, it's getting too dark. You know, we'll come back in the morning. And you're like, no, we got to go out now before the track changes. We have to go, you know, I, I need another three laps or five laps or something where you're taking responsibility for your own, you know, destiny, if you will. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, you, here's the thing, the, the more comfortable you, comfortable you feel, the more in tune you are on your motorcycle, the faster you're going to be able to go. And you, if you don't know how the motorcycle works and you don't know how to relay information to, um, whether it's suspension technician, engine technician, um, uh, cert set engineers, you know, it's, they can only do so much. They can only tune it to what they see. And some guys are so good at riding a bike that might not be handling, handling well, that might not have the best balance that they can, they kind of adjust their body and style to how the bike is working. And that even makes it hard on these technicians and engineers. So, um, yes, to, to Barsha's point, he's only going to get better. And to your point, yeah, we, we worked hard and got that bike up to par and where it needed to be, uh, to where I thought and the team thought it was race ready. And it sounds like that's what Barsha has done. And a guy like, uh, Sergio Avanta, he's, you know, he, he's been around, he's worked with some of the best in the business. Um, uh, Chad Reed being one of them. He was at factory Honda for a long time with Chad. Um, I think he was at, uh, two, two racing. He was at RCH. He's been around. He has experience. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe him and Sergio are gelling. Yeah. And, you know, it, sometimes that's all you need. But I'm glad to see that Justin has taken the initiative to really get in tune with his motorcycle and uh, learn it a little bit more. Uh, I think it's just going to make him better. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the, the Yamaha Monster Energy Yamaha team, too. They have been down. <laughs> They've been down for a while. And, uh, you know, they expect results. I personally can speak for uh, working with Jimmy Perry for a long time at the pro circuit Kawasaki team. Um, you know, he was my team manager at the time and the guy is used to winning. Uh, he was at Yamaha and Chad Reed, the Chad Reed days. So he's used to, to wins and championships. So good to see him get, looks like they've got things turned around over there. And, uh, I'm excited to see if they can rebound or not rebound, but, uh, keep the ball rolling this weekend in St. Louis. I think it, it's going to be key. And uh, I was hoping more for Aaron Plessinger. Man, it just seems like it, it got off to a rough start right out of the gate in the heat race. And he had a rough go at it, man. So I'm, I'm kind of pulling for him. I'd like to see him, you know, pull himself out of that little hole he's in and get, get on the step in the right direction yeah. uh, this week in St. Louis. Yeah, so <clears throat> failed in uh, getting some of the Essex research department uh, hey, um, up, but while so, you're looking, a uh, little another little fun fact: uh -oh. the second fastest time in the main event there was a there was a tie between Justin Barsha and um, Blake Baggett, and they ran a fifty eight point seven zero eight. Uh, the fastest was Adam Ciancerulo at a fifty eight point five. But yeah, they had the uh, exact same time. Think about that, man. That's that's pretty incredible. Like that they turned the exact same time. So yeah. that's a cool little cool little fun fact there. Yeah, wasn't there uh, five or six riders that were within two or three tenths of a second in the 450 class? Uh, yep, five riders. Two, four, five. Yep, yep. You had um, four riders that were in the um, 58.7s. And then, of course, Adam Ciancerillo is a 58.5. So, yeah, there's four riders within the same tenth, you know, a couple hundredths off. And then, yeah, Adam just, you know, he had a little bit buffer, a little buffer on speed all day long. Um, that was an incredible ride by him. You know, I was, uh, I, I was expecting him to do well, but I was really um, surprised uh, how he handled himself in the situation when he was leading, especially being around a guy like Barsha, we all know that he he's not scared to drive it in there. But uh, dude, he he never wavered, and uh, he rode his race, made a little mis made a little mistake, uh, but kept carrying on. Cincerillo is 
that was just close. That was close. He almost pitched it away. So he made the yeah. mistake, but didn't blow it big time. And what I think was interesting, like his, he had a little mistake, but when you look at the the Monster Energy Kawasaki riders as a whole with Cian Cirillo, Tomac, and Forkner, like mm -hmm. Forkner and Tomac were top of the power rankings, right? When this, this uh, thing that Supercross Live does, there's 75 individuals that that vote on that every week um and uh you know like we said cincerillo had a great ride little mistake cost him the win but forkner made another mistake that kind of seems to be his mo uh and then tomac has kind of an off night which kind of seems to be his mo so i think that that's kind of odd that uh that all of the all of all three of the cowie guys did that but anyway so back to the uh stats here from the SX Research Department, you can find them on this Instagram. The winner of the season opening race has won the championship 17 out of 46 seasons, so it's 37 percent. Does that seem high or low? I mean, I know it's it's the stats. Well, I, I swayed yeah. those stats uh, five times. Oh, you never won the opener? <laughs> never, dude. You're a guy of stats. Never. I never won it. Well, I didn't. I didn't look at one. it close enough. Never Let's opened see. it. Open. Um, doesn't surprise me yeah yeah i never so that's take five away huh? so we'd be in the low 20s the 97 i got six that says i, I got the whole shot so you you henry, swayed henry it. passed me and i did one of those things where he passed me and i went to cut down but i didn't wait long enough so i clipped his rear tire rookie <laughs> total rookie um Let's see. Since the season opener uh, moved permanently to Anaheim in 1999, the winner of the first race has won the championship six out of 21, so 28 percent. Yeah. The eventual champion finished outside the top five in six of 46 seasons, 13 percent. Wow. What? That's kind of interesting. Hey, what so you... like? Yeah, it's like yeah. just get through the first race and not lose too many points. It's kind of the MO. Yeah. Huh. What'd you think of um what'd you think of Anderson? Tell me what your thoughts are on him. I have my thoughts. I want to hear yours. I'm sure our listeners um, do as well. You know, I I kept an eye on him during qualifying practice and things like that, but honestly in the main event I was so focused on the lead guys that I, I didn't really go back in the pack and I I, I, um, I actually haven't watched the 450 main event back yet on NBC. So yeah, he had the he had the fourth fastest time in the main event. Um, he didn't get a great start. He was um, he was ninth on the first lap. He was bunched up in that uh, in that group with Baggett, Brayton, um, Roxon. He was like kind of in, in that group for a while. But uh, I thought it was I thought it was a good run. I mean, he was, what, P3 in time qualifying practice. So the speed was there. I think, um, you know, work on his starts a little bit, and, and he'll be good. Uh, people got to remember that the guy hasn't raced, uh, well, a Monster Energy Supercross since, what, Glendale last year. He got hurt the week leading up to the third round, I believe. Yep. So um, I thought it was good. I do think that, hey, say what you want. A lot of guys don't do it. Uh, in this day and age, pro like they did say in your day, and I didn't even do it that much back then. I wish I would have. It's one of the regrets I have. But I think a lot of the off-season races that he did helped him um, make up for lost time and the lack of races that he did last year. And he came in ready to rip, comfortable on his bike, and uh, ready to go. So I, I attribute his some of his success at the opening here. To, to racing overseas. Yeah, I mean, you either need more reps or you need more rest, right? If you're if you're uh, one of the guys that that uh, rode every event last year, you know, some of these guys rode motocross of nations. You might need need some rest, but with all that time off, he did ride motocross of nations. He right. went, went all all over the world, put a, a put a little money in the overseas bank account. That's probably not a bad thing. Yeah, no, 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 a little. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, a little, or yeah. I, I mean, uh huh. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the 250 class. Yeah. Thoughts? Well, uh, so what 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 stuck out? Like, what was the biggest story to you? 
Um, honestly, Justin Cooper. I know that he's capable of winning, but he just, I mean, he looked awesome. He not always does he look, he, he hardly ever looks like he's out of control. He's one of those riders that ride in control. Uh, he has great, great control on the motorcycle, like perfectly balanced. And you, you look at him, you're like, man, it doesn't look that fast. But then you look at the stopwatch and the guy's absolutely killing it. Yeah. I mean, he rode a race like a veteran would, you Did know, that has time? been racing a four. Uh, no, he didn't. I don't have my uh, 250 times here, but no. Uh, no, he didn't. No, I think he was uh, a tenth off, maybe, of uh, I think of Ferrandis. Yeah, yeah, of Ferrandis, and then he was second fastest, and um, Austin was third fastest, and the uh, and the, uh, the you know what was was crazy fastest time. So out of that second turn where there were the six jumps, uh, yeah, Forkner was at times going triple, triple, and it was a pretty pretty big risk and yeah. all that. And most guys were going like two, three, one. Yeah. Watch Cooper. He went two, 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 like the whole main event. Just yeah. And you know, like just kind of stayed low and just kind of, it was almost like it was a resting place for him. Like he wasn't going to exert a lot of energy to be a tenth quicker through that section or something. I thought it was really a smart uh, decision. And while he did that, see, he didn't have to worry about triple tripling, didn't have to worry about setting himself up in the corner. He could carry more speed around the corner because he didn't have to be just upright and hit the corner precisely to do that triple triple. So it's just one less thing to worry about. And he could just worry about hitting his marks and um, keeping keeping Forkner in tow. So, I mean, it was an incredible ride. I mean, he had he had Forkner right where he wants him. And in my opinion, I think Forkner is one of those guys where he gets frustrated if he can't pull away. And I feel like that was a forced error. Uh, and, and that's how he wrecked, you know, just a little miscue, over jumped, jumping onto that dragon back to hop out, like triple out of it. And off he went. But uh, Kudos to that guy, and he was in the perfect place at the perfect time. Now, if you go back to the East Coast last year and think about how far he was getting beat by Austin Forkner in the main events. I mean, Austin was yeah, killing yeah. everybody, Justin yep. included. Yep. Look how close he was. Uh, so good, good job, man. And, I mean, I, I personally think a lot of it was at Odie um, – Emig Pro Grip is what I think it was at ODI Jeff Emig. Oh, you mean you mean these? What, which one? You mean the new yeah. uh, the new uh, colorways here of the Emig Pro? Yeah, like that one. Like yeah, that? So the Lock On cool. Grip. Did does he run the Super Soft? The ones that I like? He runs the right now. He's running the all black version of the Emig Pro. So that's the new black green that we have. We have a a black yellow gold right here. Pretty cool. This one actually just launched this week, uh, and they are in your dealers. And then, of course, uh, this sort of uh, gray. Well, orange. I can I can tell you what we're going to have on does set. It, All our look? listeners, we're going to have on set next week is we're going to have the Ricky Carmichael <laughs> Slick Products washing kit on yeah? set next week. Oh yeah. Maybe we can uh, give away a set of those new RC4 Bend ODI handlebars too. So. Yeah, so super stoked. Uh, um, so Justin Cooper cool started him, running. Man. Yeah, he started running the Emic Pro about a month ago. Um, uh, was amped that he that he liked the grip, uh, and uh, his team, uh, Star Yamaha's uh, ODI uh, sponsored team. Um, and so when he started running the grip, um, liked it, uh, and the fact that he out of the blue just gave me a shout out on the on the on the podium. Um, on NBC, I was I was really stoked. I mean, I was just yeah. so proud of him, though the the type of ride that he put in, um, and the maturity that he showed, and just the focus, and and then for me personally, it just capped it off. Where he's like, yeah, I'm running the Emic Pro, so I was I was really stoked. Yeah, that's a congratulations. Man. You got so a great we should grip. give away some grips, though. We should well, give away some grips. What do you want to do for our viewers and listeners this week? I think Maybe that um, whoever can predict what the fastest lap time will be in the 250 class for St. Louis in the main event. Well, how do they do that? They just have to guess. They have to look at, go on the um, Supercross uh, website 
SX uh, online, right? Supercrosslive.com. Go to supercrosslive.com and uh, look at the track map and uh, tell us what you think uh, will be um, the so when, best, but, but there's fastest gonna be, lap. Well, there's got to be a time frame for that, though, right? So we I have mean, to like – so I'll so I'll go, so just hit us up on uh, at talk four four seven on Twitter sometime uh, before the race starts, and uh, and I'll well would have to have to uh, the closest without going over wins. This is like the Price is Right. The closest the without going right. over. We'll do that. We'll do that. Also, I feel like uh, uh, so uh, any of you customers that are out there that have already purchased. Uh, a set of Emig Pro grips from ODI. If you if you post a picture of your grips, tag us on the on the pick, and I'll randomly pick somebody and I'll give you a free pair. How's that? Sound good? That's a good deal, right? Pay it forward a little bit. I guess so. Yeah. Hey, do you do you have any of the new colors, or are you just running? <laughs> I mean, blue? I I mean, do, I mean, of course I don't. I was one of your. I was one of your first sponsored athletes. You were. You were my. I'm first. the last. I'm the last one to get it. Hey, that being said, um, though, like I said, when I tried your, uh, I tried your bar bin, that RC4 bin, which is really low. Like it's. Um, no, it's not right. low. Well, compared to what I had been using, which was my really? bin. Yeah, I used the Champ bin, uh, which is uh, exact as the uh, the Renthal bin that I had came up with, you know, 20 years ago. And the 19 oh shit yeah, look, that year it was a while back <laughs> um uh yeah um <laughs> so i i decided hey i just want to see what these feel like because uh um uh the 2019 husvarnas i believe came with like a lower rise on the bars um and i never rode with it uh production so i'm like oh i want to see what this is because i feel like that's kind of like the trend lately is is these like shorter, shallower uh, rise bars. And dude, I really liked it. I honestly did. That's that's my bar bin now. So thanks, man. Good, good job on that. I appreciate it. And yeah, it was fun. It was fun developing that, and uh, I hope people like it. We'll try to keep improving each year, uh, make it better, safer, uh, more effective. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah and so those and that bin comes in the uh, 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 CFT and the podium, I believe, correct? Yeah, with the crossbar and without. Okay, yes, cool. uh, yes. you can check that stuff out at at uh, odigrips.com or at your favorite retailer. Yeah. So, um, well, that's hey, Cooper. I, I, I want to take a quick intermission, real quick, just a moment, uh, to to send our thoughts and prayers to everyone on in Australia. Uh, Jeff, you and I have tons of friends, acquaintances there, uh, a bunch of friends from there that yeah. live in the States and others. Uh, so I would like to uh, tell everyone over there that are listening, uh, that listen to our podcast, that we're thinking about you guys and um, uh, hoping the best for your beautiful country. You guys live in a tremendous place and uh, we're thinking about you. So we're going to support you as the best that we can. So. so I still had this pulled up on the measures app on my on my phone. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the news the other day, and they were saying one of the reasons why these fires are are going out of control is it's forty eight point nine degrees Celsius, and I was like, okay, that's pretty hot, right? I know thirty is getting up there, so I did it. I punched it into measures. That's a hundred and twenty degrees. A hundred and twenty. I mean that's like Lake Havasu hot, right? That's like you're on vacation down at the down at the river, not like this whole, you know, millions of acres. I mean I I don't even know what the firefighters are having to go through down there. I, it's it's uh, pretty tragic. So. Man. So anyhow, um, back to the 250. So hell of a ride by Justin Cooper. Um, I expect more. Uh, out of Forkner this next weekend, he he wasn't as fast as what he had been. You know, the uh, most certainly wasn't last like the speed he was last year. I mean, he had everybody covered <laughs> by a long shot. Um, yeah, I still think from what I saw this past weekend, he's still got some learning to do. So um, 
he's fun to watch. There's no doubt. It'll well, be exciting. And then, um, and, and Dylan Ferrandez looked good all weekend, fast every time, fastest every time he was out on the track. And uh, just those starts, man. Uh, it, it hurt him last year. He ended up winning the championship, but it definitely didn't make his life easier. So, man, if I'm Dylan Ferrandez, I am starting on the inside uh, or right next to uh, my main competitors, but on the inside of them every single weekend. Um, I, that that's what I'm doing. I'm playing defense, and at least come out of the gate right there with them, and then you know you're good because I don't think that any of these guys are going to beat them on straight up speed. It's just going to be very hard to, but uh, he cannot spot those guys. You know, you just like kind of like we talk about Tomac or I do. You can't. Yeah. Okay. You know, I just realized yeah. I want to take a little what? a little pause right here too. You got your mic backwards. <laughs> no, you got yours backwards. No, I, I looked at that earlier. No, 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 no. Look well, at ha- look at you got you got. It's supposed to be see the mute button that's uh, where the volume and yeah, and it's the right here. Is? <laughs> yeah, excuse me. You've got it backwards, yeah. brother. No, that's no, you sure. Well, okay, hold up, but. Then my wires, like I won't be able to adjust the. You put this thing on for, backwards then. No, but because uh, then you put it on backwards. How? You didn't. When we talked yesterday, you didn't even know that there was a, a user manual that came with it. And you're telling me that. <laughs> no, it's, yours is well, let's the wrong not change way. anything right now because the last thing that we need is any more audio issues. And no, our the, apologies go wrong. out. We had a problem with Johnny O's mic last week. Uh, well, it wouldn't be real talk without some trying to edit without some. <laughs> it wouldn't be real talk without some jacked up audio. Well, you've already cut your out. screen is froze a couple times anyway. Yeah, since, I know. Since, like since my Wi-Fi is jacked up a couple times. Dude, I don't know. Stop being cheap and shell out for the fast Wi-Fi. I don't know what your problem is. Right. I dude, I got biz. I got Comcast business. Hey, he was bragging to me. He's like, yeah, I got uh, my upload speed is 20 he was bragging about an hour ago i'm like 20 well yeah but i also got a processor it runs through a processor to the like straight out of the ethernet it's like 200 but i got a whole bunch of other crap it runs through (laughs) um shit where was i gonna go where was i gonna go 250 Um, we were talking about 250 yeah 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 yeah. so um okay research department texted me this earlier uh these are the lights numbers. Since 1999, uh, there have been 21 years, so 42 east and, when you combine east and west. I'm going to take a break right now while okay, you're Okay, you go to sleep. You take a little minutes, nap ski. Right? Hey, there's a couple fans out there that like hearing the stats, okay? So 20 a couple, a couple. Okay. <laughs> Will you stop interrupting me for a second? Okay, go. <laughs> Okay, 20 of the 42 winners uh, of the first races in the different series have won the championship. So 47%. Uh, percent. So in the 250 class, winning the first race is has proven to be uh, a better predictor of winning the <laughs> of winning the championship. Uh, in the West, only seven of 21 have done it. That's 33%. So Webb, Anderson, Weimer, Villapoto, Tedesco, Preston, and Fonseca. In the East, it's 13 of 21, uh, which is 61%. So that's Osborne, Muskan, Barsha a couple times, Porcel a couple times, Kennard, Millsap, Stewart, Jesmin, Reed, Pastrana, and Fonseca. Since 2017, it's only happened uh, once in six full regional seasons. That's 16%. And that's uh, Cooper Webb in 18 Man, that was a hell of a stat. That was a hell of a stat. I'm just, hey, maybe he's having a bad day. I don't know. (laughs) They caught your eye. The research department really, really does a good job, though, for us. And so if you uh, are into the stat stuff, you can go to at SX Research on Instagram and follow uh, all the information that they have there. Hey, speaking of. 
starts. Um, did you catch uh, at the beginning of the 250 main event, uh, the camera shot on NBC Sports was on uh, Ferrandez. Did you see like his pre-gate drop like oh, yeah. routine? Like he's pretty animated. Like I was animated and and did did you see he he does like amped up? He does one foot up. Oh yeah, so he wants to get that next. I thought. I mean, he had his one foot up right before it looked like they were getting ready to go, and I need to I need to ask I need to ask DV about that. Yeah, and that's kind of a European thing. Uh, They now use uh, metal. metal uh, starting gates in Europe now too but in the past uh, they would just be dirt and they would go through and so every time there, that there'd be a start the gate would be brand new so it's nice and flat where uh, the tire is going to spin and you need to get that next gear shift really quick but when you're on these metal uh, you know on these metal starting pads there's so much traction I, to me I would think that you'd want both feet down so that you'd be balanced yeah, for sure. So we're going to St. Louis this weekend, and I want to tell a funny story about um, my first my first year to St. Louis, 1997. Uh, it was the main event and had a really nice lead, oh, like, yeah. I don't know, three, four laps in. And at the end of the first turn, or pardon me, going into the first turn, The end of the straightaway, start straightaway, turns left, and there's like three little rollers. And you could go outside and like triple and then into a 90-degree left-hand turn. And you go outside, triple, or you could go inside like double, single. No, it was like through the first turn, wasn't it? Yeah, Yeah. there was like a little roller or something. Yeah, like three rollers. So anyhow, I'm like vibing. I'm like, dude, this is my track. Everything's good. Excuse me. And I I go outside, I turn left, and I seat hop over these three little roller things. Oh, yeah, and then outside. I just leaned, I I was just a little too far to the right, dude, and my front end tucked, and I flipped. I went, oh, dude, and I had a nice lead, and I was so bummed. I think my visor was bent down and stuff like this, and it was just one of those, as it was going over, you're like, no. Yeah. And all I could think, because I had had a history of crashing that oh, year. Yeah. And that was, yeah. So if you guys are bored this week on YouTube, go check it out. 1997, 125 main event, St. Louis. And watch it about lap three, lap five, something something like that. Yeah, then got back up, started working my way through the pack. Then I think um, um, Stefan Roncata, like, like, elbow checked me and I went back <laughs> I jumped off awesome. the track again if you want some good laughter go check go check it out and then uh, one of the scariest crashes I ever had was uh, 1990 or no 2006 the season of 2006 uh, in the heat race my oh. hand came off in the whoops and that was how did your hand the, come off I don't know well I broke my left wrist and that yeah like I was coming up and I your left wrist Hey, hand hey. flew off. You know, so you know, you know the you know our tagline for the Emic Pros right here. I don't know, you probably can't see it, but no, no grip, no glory. Hashtag no grip, no glory. You proved it that night. That's right. I, re- I remember that That's footage. Right. I remember that footage. Didn't you also? Didn't you? Was that the same year that you like broke a shock spring or something? Yeah, that that happened in the main event. My shock spring broke, but. Go watch this one, 2006 um, St. Louis heat race. Yeah, my hand came off, and uh, as I was going over, I, these are one of the crashes I'll never forget. I was like, oh, my God, please just let me walk oh, that's away right. through this. You it went, was, like, face first, and the bike— Scorpion. Oh. Scorpion. Yeah, it was a really scary crash, so check that out. But then that typical the Hort, Hort, Gordon Wait, what- Horseshoe up— yeah. Golden, golden horseshoe up my butt. So in the main event, I had to go the, I think it was last chance or semi, whatever it was. Went to the main. Anyhow, in a good position in the main event. And my shock spring breaks. So I DNF. And then like two laps later, Stu falls down and he can't get his bike cranked. And like uh, Chad Reed ended up winning that night. But 
so the the damage wasn't too bad. We'd already had a healthy points lead on on Chad at that time of the year, but um, wasn't that the race also that y- there was uh, a fuel issue that you had? Wasn't it all wrapped no. up in that same weekend? No, 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 no. That was no, no, no. My fuel, fuel gate. Was, my fuel, fuel gate. wasn't illegal either. No, it in wasn't. 96. It hey, you remember been. that year? It, it was 96 been. is that year you 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 got lucky there, right? Mm, yeah. 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 That was I never knew, but I was reading the stats that uh that that was the first year they ever had St. Louis Supercross yeah. 96. Yeah. I, re- I read man. that story that was on uh, um that uh, BJ Smith wrote uh what's his what's his page? We we were We, we were, went we went fast. We went fast on Instagram. Uh, they tell that story, and it's from the perspective of uh, Skip Norfolk and uh, Jeremy uh, McGrath on that on that night, which I thought was pretty interesting. I thought it was really well, uh, insightful. What was their perspective on it? Well, uh, no, it's it's actually a really insightful story, and Skip Skip actually felt like he let Jeremy down that uh, that night because um, there was just too much commotion, and uh, uh, we actually had the eighteen wheeler there, so I had my uh, my like regular setup, uh, Honda still had box fans at the time. And so they had to move into like the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it? Um, a convention center area. So they were just set up in the, you know, the hall convention yeah, hall in the, in the hall. And he just had a lot of, a lot of, uh, distractions. It's a pretty interesting story. If you get a chance to check it out on, we went fast. Um, um, so obviously I, I had that win there. That was, that was, uh, you know, really important for my career, uh, big night and all that. But St. Louis, the, the dirt there is like, I mean, would oh. you say still like the best ever? There's just something yeah. about it. It's just, it gets rutted, it goes away, but there's something about how the dirt forms and shapes up where you can, it's probably the one track in the surface where you can ride the bike to its full potential, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. Absolutely, it's just and the and another thing that makes St. Louis so good is because the dirt. The riders are amped to go there. They all know that it's the best dirt. Um, you know, most of them feel like that's the best dirt on the circuit. So uh, their attitude's good and and they're amped to go out there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a West Coast round this year, so uh, that'll be fun. Uh, that's uh, Austin Forkner. That'll be a home race for him. Obviously, being in Missouri. Yeah. I expect him to rebound. I think he's going to be good. And yeah, um, yeah I think a little bit of emotion from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a home race, I feel like he rises to the occasions yeah. on stuff like that. So I know it'll be good. Um, so my probably what I think is my best ride at St. Louis was the the year after I won. So in '97, you were, you remember the track? It's the one you were just talking about where you crashed in the first turn. But so you remember you go through the first turn, like triple. I just remember when you almost broke your femur in practice. Yeah, yeah. So we used to have uh, like press day slash practice on Friday evenings, and mm-hmm. we'd get what maybe a a couple of fifteen minute rides or something like that. Quite a bit, quite a bit of time. Yeah. So it, once again, if you if you watch the race, uh, if you go watch it online, so there was the the first big triple. Then you kind of hit what would you call that the third turn? Well, yeah. the first 180, and then there was like a double, and then a double up into uh, uh, you know a tabletop with two knuckles on each side, and then a backward ski jump. So you jump into this kind of touch, and then jump off. Well, on Friday practice, I go through that section, the bike bogs, and I go just straight into the face of that sort of backward ski jump ride, about a five or six footer. And I catch the handlebars on my right thigh, right above my knee brace. And I mean, I thought my leg is broken. Well, I mean, it was bad. So that night it's super sore, right? I'm getting like a massage. I'm stretching. stretching. You wouldn't, you wouldn't like, like make it out bigger to be Dude. than it really was. Would you Dude, up in the uh. morning? I woke up in the morning and the bruise on my leg was this big. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to race. And I was points that's leader a big, at the time. That's a big bruise, man. I, I'm bigger than my leg, actually. So maybe it was this big. I had a bruise <laughs> this big. Um, 
so in the in the hotel, I go, I get, I go to like the gym, and I ride like you know, uh, you know the um, you know the, um, a spin bike, and I'm stretching it, all this. I get to the track, and uh, somebody was like, hey, some guy was there that was like a ther- sports therapist or something, and he's like, hey, you need to take some shark cartilage. This will fix it. I never took shark cartilage. I don't remember who the guy was. If I remember correctly, I don't even know the guy at the time. Dude, I was eating shark cartilage like Tic Tacs that day and getting massaged, getting stretched. I go out for the first practice and I'm like, oh, this is okay. About two laps in, I start getting a massive, massive hamstring pull because my quads weren't working at all. Only my hamstrings. And I pull in and I'm like, I was talking to my mechanic, Jeremy Albrecht, and I'm like, dude, I, I don't think I'll be able to do this. Like, and we're, we're the points leader. And so I only wrote, if I remember, I only wrote a little bit of the first practice and go back in. And then I started like massive massage and stretching and everything and managed to, to, to race that night. I think I had a pretty good heat um, and ended up second in the main event. I think it was second. Maybe it was third. I mean, it was second. But it was like, you know, Jeremy ended up winning that night. But that second was so important. And that, you know, to, to have to ride through that pain that day and to, to, to those things that because it was fresh, you could just put it out of your mind and get it done. You, you know, I think that was one of my best rides that I, that I you know, that I'd had. Now, the next week, I was a mess. I was like eight the next week. Once all that bruising and everything set in, I was a mess. But that day, you know, that night I managed the podium. So. Do what you had to do. Hey, um, I know we're getting short on time here, but uh, I wanted to touch base and um, get back to something we talked a little bit about when we did the uh, Fox sales meeting awards, that the FPs. The FP Remember awards. The, the FP awards. And we – the verdict is is still out. What's that? How come the beard doesn't match your hair color? You're telling me you do you don't do any di- hair dye? No, I don't. I don't. Look, it's right. No there. hair dye, but no, I don't. There's every now and then. That, I that get is, a little you're gray. telling me I, every. We want to do an online poll. Is the hair all natural? Yes. Is what I would like to know. There's no way that your hair is. Dude, it just no, it's stopped not, right there. It's not modified. No, not at all. Not at all. And what's, Come on, what's crazy dude. about the mustache? At least it's getting a little bit of grays in my mustache. But like six months ago, if I shaved it real short, this part was real dark. So I had like a porn stash. It looked like if you didn't see me like up close, it looked like I had this big, big hairy it's porn the- stash. I'm like, oh, that's not I a don't good know. Look yeah. I mean, turn your head to the side. Let's get our viewers like. So I want to know an online poll. Are you guys telling me that his hair is all natural? Do I dye my uh, hair or not? Yes. I, I, I'm not buying it, brother. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm like one of your best friends. You can tell me. <laughs> no, I never give up my, my beauty secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's uh, that's what I'd like to know. But uh, I'm looking forward dude, to hey, St. Hey, Louis. Hey, is speaking be... of, dude, your suit last week was sharp. I liked it. Did let's you like let's it? see. It, okay, I want to. I want to. I want to throw something else out there then for our uh, okay. our viewers. Give me a thumbs up or comes thumbs down on uh, on Ricky's suit last week. That's pretty sharp. I know you didn't pick that out yourself. Your lady Tia had to uh, pick. I, I had a little help. I had a little. And help. You're, dude, you're 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 fit though. You've been training Thanks, too, man. huh? Thanks. I've been working hard. I'm bummed right now because I can't keep it up. So. I mean, I'm still, I mean, and you know, and, hey, a lot of people ask, dude, I didn't do anything crazy. I, I didn't train anymore. I certainly didn't train any less, but I've, I've always trained. But uh, all I did was just buckle down on my diet. That oh, yeah? It. Nothing, no crazy diet, dude. I just, a good balanced meal. And uh, Maybe here I am. I here I am. Yeah, no, there's no secret. So I feel great and uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Do you still cycle uh, at the pace of the of the guys here around there? You're like, Jimmy yeah. I mean, they, whoever, they get. I mean, they. I mean, it, I can still go pretty good. I used to go not most certainly not the pace that I used to be able to, but uh, I can hang with with some of the boys for sure. How many watts can you throw out? Did you ever? Oh, uh, yeah. do, you, do you remember what your max wattage was when you 
No. You did a physical test? Mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting. I was watching this thing with uh, on the Red Bull Moto Spy, I believe it was, and they had uh, uh, Brandon Hartrap. They had him uh, like in the in the office doing the test and all that. And the doctor was saying, yeah, he was like at 3.30 or something. I don't, you could have been 5.30. I don't even know what that number means. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Michael Byrne about it. He says, yeah, that's actually, you know, that's pretty solid. He goes, you know, I'm a cyclist or cruise around, you know, eating lunch at 600, but, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Good deal, I man. I don't want to know. All right, well, let's wrap it up. That's actually uh, an hour right there. So, uh, any any final words before I close it out? No, everybody, thank you for listening. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Slick Products, for coming on board. We're really excited. Um, everybody go check out their website. We will be giving away a wash kit and after every episode. You guys know what um, – what you got to do to win that? You got to uh, send us your uh, your your best bobblehead that you think you got, and uh, we'll send you off a kit. They will, and we'll get it to you. So yeah, um, use uh, hashtag Real Talk four four seven. You can tag Ricky, myself, Slick Products um, at Talk four four seven on Twitter. Uh, if you want to reach us directly with comments that way, obviously you can comment and like and. Subscribe to the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and uh, if you're listening to this and you want to watch the video, you go to uh, we have moved uh, uh, Real Talk 447 to the Fox Racing channel on YouTube. So check them out. So a big thanks to uh, everyone here in the production team at Fox Racing. Um, also, yep. uh, what do we say to win the grips? Win a, uh, so we got two things. So post a picture of your Emig Pro grips. Uh, and I'm going to randomly uh, pick a winner, and I will get your contact in- info and send you one of the new colors if you want. And what was that crazy giveaway you wanted to do with lap times? Oh, yeah. Who, predict the who, lap times. And- the closest the closest um, guess to the best lap time of the 250 main event, fastest time. And, and when are they got to do that, like after the heats? Um, let's do it after uh, time qualifying practice. Oh, after time qualifying. Okay, so before yeah, the show be- starts. Before the race, before we'll, the show starts. Got it, got to post it. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, I appreciate it. Ricky, appreciate your time, Thanks. dude. It's fun. We'll do it again. We'll do it again next week. All right, I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, well, I'm and, not feeling uh, better, but i get there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, brother. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, as usual, we're going to take you out with the uh, Andrew McKeague Band and his track, This Old Life. See you guys. Go through and hit, hit, hit record, and it's, uh, let's see, so we should have that screen motion. Uh, did you hear that? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs>